Hanging doors has long been the bane of my existence. I don't care how long I've been in construction. I don't care how many doors I've hung. I've never had somebody formally teach me how to do it. So I have always like just hated hanging doors. That being the case, um, if you follow on Instagram, the page called The Right Way Guy, he just gave some tips and tricks for hanging doors on a house that he is building. So I'm gonna try to follow all of his tips and tricks and see if that makes this process suck less. If it does, you'll see this video. If not, I'll delete this and I won't share the instruction with you because I still suck at hanging doors. The first thing that he says we should do on his channel is we wanna make sure that this wall, well, the wall that has your hinges attached so that your door is gonna swing on, we're gonna make that our baseline to work off of. So in this case, for me, that would be this wall. Now I know that wall is leveled this way, I've checked, but this board right here actually is quite out of level. So we are gonna shim this wall out because this is where our hinge side is gonna be, meaning the door is gonna open this way, and we're gonna get a nice level base. I'm gonna use my really long level to check it, and then we're gonna start off of that as our baseline. So let's do that. One thing I want you to pay attention to, it's kind of hard to photo video, but if I, let me see if I can hold this with my knee. If I slide this shim in there, see how on this side it's tight, but then on that side there's a gap. It's gonna wanna tilt my door that way and it makes this then not flush. So I wanna make sure instead of using the pie side of my width that I slide this out and I put a shim from this side and this side so in the middle it's flush instead of canting my door in. <laughs> okay, so basically, sorry, I have my camera in my shim bucket on a bag. Instead of sliding this in, see how we have that angle? Instead of sliding that in, we're gonna take two and we're gonna meet them in the middle. Maybe not that one, cause that one's messed up. But we're gonna meet them in the middle instead of using like this full width, we're gonna slide until they get our width this way, but then this isn't tilting it. We have a nice even, amount coming from each side of the door. I measured to get the heights of the hinges because I wanted to make sure that I had my shims supported approximately in the area where I was going to screw in my hinges so that there was no warping at those points. Then I used my long level to make this perfectly level from the bottom to the top. I also, once I got my shims as I needed them, I trimmed them off with my oscillating tool so that when I went to install the door, I wasn't bumping into them. I installed blocking at the back that I would remove later, so make sure you do this with a screw and not a nail gun so it's easy to get out again. This just gave me a blocking to rest the framing of the door up against while I was getting everything adjusted. Remove the piece in the doorknob hole holding the door in place to the frame before you install the door. I lifted my door into place at this time only worrying about the side that the hinges are connected to. So that was my baseline, that's what I got level, that's what I'm attaching, and then we'll adjust everything after we get that side secured. Okay, so this was stupid. I had to wedge my way through this doorway and luckily I'm small. I was like, why is this having like perfectly level? Why is this door having such a hard time? I can figure it out. My blocks are stopping my door. So I'm just an idiot. So make sure you either make these only come out far enough where they're gonna catch your framing but not your door or you have another way into the room. Fortunately, I could squeeze through and kind of force it. I'm gonna take those blocks off real quick because now I have this attached at the top and at the bottom and then I'm gonna figure <laughs> finish my adjustment so that was just a little stupid brain fart so now look at the top we want to get that gap to be consistent one thing we're fighting against and you can't tell from just looking at it on camera there is a big hump right here in the floor basically this this whole house is built out of stone and right here is our middle structural wall so like even up in our closet we have a beam and so right here, there is a stone structural wall underneath that kind of gave us a little bit of a hump that there wasn't a lot we could do with because it was stone and just with movement over the years. So we're going to make a little bit of an adjustment, trim this side down just to get it where that's a little bit more consistent. But we might leave this a little out of whack simply because of the nature of having, we know we have something there that we're fighting against. But man, starting with that wall made this so easy. Now we're gonna make this as aesthetically pleasing as we can on the top and the side, but that was a great trick. One thing I've always been told is in your hinges, that's where your motion and your weight distribution of your door is gonna happen. So I have always been told, and I think some of the door kits come with this. This door has just been in this house for so long. 
to take out your center screw on each of these hinges and replace it because these are so short because they come with the kit they're not longer than you know this little piece of trim right here get a long screw so it has some grabbing power it can go through whatever gap you've shimmed and it's going to go into the two by four back there so i would say probably at least two and a half inches and replace this middle screw on each hinge with a longer screw and then i'm putting some good support around each uh, you can't see down below i'll show you and then all the way down down here around each sorry <laughs> where each hinges and then i'll make sure also to you know get some supports on this side as well but we're really trying to support that structure where the movement goes if you know you have a big gap you can get just these pieces of you can get it in bundles at your home improvement store of wood lath because you know how i had talked about not wanting to put in a shim like this way and camp the direction of your door if you don't intend to so you're going to put them in like this, so it's balanced instead of doing like two that way and tilting it. You can do this, but you can also get these pieces of lath and they're like four feet long. So you're gonna trim them down into little shim sized pieces. But for my sections that I have a bigger gap, I get this. And then what I'll do is I'll work with all this in conjunction. Like if my gap is at least that big, I'll put that in and then I'll work these in, you know, the difference if I need to shim it a little bit more, but it's nice to have that thick piece to start with if you have a bigger gap in some areas. Now, all we're gonna do is I'm gonna shim this level and where my gap when I close my door is uniform. And I'll basically do the same thing I did over here, shim probably up at the top, down at the bottom in the middle, get a couple screws in. A lot of people use nails. I just use screws because I'm not super great at installing doors. I like the removability of a screw versus a nail gun. So we'll go ahead and we'll get those screwed in. And then when we go ahead and caulk all our trim and we touch up all our you know, final touch up, we will, over these screw holes, I counter sunk those. So we'll actually fill those in with a, a putty or a wood filler and then we'll paint over those when we paint the trim of the door. There it is. I have never had such a smooth door hanging process in my life. See you on the next one.